Thank you for finding my channel. My name is Derek and this is Games and Tables. On this channel, my goal is to provide tabletop games ranging from games like Core Space, Demon Dev Monster, Blackstone Fortress, 40K, but I also may stream video games like Call of Duty or Battlefield to name a couple. The focus will be primarily table games. It's my first video on this channel. I'll be playing Kingdom Death Monster, a game by Adam Poots. This is my first time. I hope the quality will continue to improve and people will enjoy the content. Once upon a time, there was a place of carved stone faces. A man with a lantern lay sleeping a dreamless sleep. The man knew nothing. One day, the man woke up. He rubbed the dried ink caked over his eyes and opened them. Around him, he saw other people stirring. And beyond, a horizon of unbroken darkness. A woman approached the man with the lantern. Her soft hand reached out to him. They had no words. They were a mystery to each other. Suddenly, a monster emerged from the darkness. Its eyes wild with hunger. It attacked. The people were no match for the monster. It tore their flesh and crushed their bones between its teeth. Some, it devoured whole. Overcome with terror and grief, the man with the lantern collapsed to the ground. Cold stone noses pushed into his side. There was no escape. But the man did not want to die. Desperately grasping at the cold stone faces, he felt a crack and tore at it with all his might. A piece of stone came free. It was sharp and deadly. The man with the lantern scrambled to his feet, his weapon clenched in his fist. He took a deep breath and roared into the darkness. Somewhere in the place of stone faces, nameless men stand together. They have nothing but a need to survive and a lantern to light their struggle. So after the prologue, everything is set up. The white line, some of the basic stats of a white line, will be taking the first turn, it's the first level white line. So it's movement is six, toughness is eight. Again, very first action, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an AI card. AI card is Claw. Okay, what you do first, you pick a target. It's closest threat facing in range, which is going to be everybody. So everybody's facing. And they should all be within six. I guess I should have introduced characters. Characters that I have from left to right, blue hair, Trinity, and the red is Kira. Next is Four Leaf, and then we have uh, Christmas. I thought that was an interesting name. Got any uh, expendable fans out there? They are all in range, and uh, Four Leaf is the monster controller. One of the rules you can do. If they're all in equal range, or at least you have two, which would be uh, Kira here, Four Leaf here. Four Leaf going to be the target. So doing that, that, he'll, that will gain him one insanity. Insanity is basically a defense against mind or brain trauma. This is a situation of waking up, and the first thing you see is people getting torn apart by a white lion. So, and sees the target, 
the line is going to move is six its claw is a basic action as you see at the bottom he has a speed two which means he rolls two dice two plus to hit does one damage each And according to Four Leaf's sheet, he does have one point of armor, but let's see. The line hits. <laughs> the one and the two. Classic rolling. So he hit once. So what I can do, each survivor starts with one survival. Basically, I can use that survival to actually dodge the attack. But let's see what location he hits. Hits him in the hand. He doesn't have any armor in the hand. But he can take him. He can take basically three, three, uh, well, two wounds. He can light the heavy before he gets stunned or knocked out. I mean, real damage is done. Um, if he does have it to give, leave, I'll just take that point on his hand. Mark the stat sheet off, and that's the end of the White Lion's turn. This card on the AI deck, not AI deck. So now it's the survivor's turn. Christmas is actually going to go one, two, four, five. You get into the Beast blind spot. See what that does is they have an accuracy of seven. You hit them from the blind spot, which is these points directly behind the beast. Then they get plus one to their accuracy. They will be using bounding stones. They start off with the it's two attacks, seven plus the hit, and then it's one strength but since he's fighting from behind he has six plus so he's gonna roll two dice he needs sixes we missed five and a two that's not a great start okay And four leaf doesn't want it. Good on it. Four. What is hope? Do you have enough to get there? It does. So Kira's gonna attack next. The same deal. He fixes. Three and two. Ah, guys. Trying to be. Come on, bro, you can do it. Nope. Should change dice. I might just get two more dice. Alright. Left. I want to have four leaf attack. Just riled up. <laughs> nope, not today. So, with no hits, it's no longer our turn. And the monster controller is going to pass to Kira. And I'm going to draw the monster's AI called Grasp. They pick target, closest knockdown survivor in range. 
No, not down. Survivor. This is survivor in range. You're between um, Remedy, Coral Leaf. Because if you're in the blind spot, you're not actually in range. The monster can't see you. Okay, so he's basically going to turn. Face her. Okay. This is only a one speed attack. Hits on a two. Okay, that hits. Let's get a roll on. Where does he hit? Ooh, in the head. Head damage is always it's pretty bad. Pretty easily get killed. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to spend Primitive's survival. And I want to dodge remove this. And since it's after damage, you would apply um, it says after damage, the white line isolates its prey, full move the white line away from all threats, target suffers grab. That's basically he just grabs her runs off but you use dodge so there's no damage so that doesn't trigger that AI so we're back to the survivors turn and um, let's see what's to go next maybe four leaf is gonna go next it's gonna attack he's in the rear but we need sixes instead of sevens oh Perfect 10. Two hits. So we're going to draw the hit location. First is a strange hand. Let's see. And it says failure. It's a reflex. And stiffly striking back, white lion, oddly human hand darts forward. Form basic action target the attack, the attacker. So basically, I need to wound him. Okay, and as you know, the so he's using the founding stone. Before we need to roll a seven, the wound. That's just one or another hit location since he hit twice. He had the beast tricep. He also had the reflex failure to perform a basic action. So there's really. Both of them perform basic action. Hopefully, I can roll another 10, get critical. But we need to see. That's 8. Needs a 7. Got the Oh, he did it. Surprised. So he didn't fail. So this goes into the wound pile. So we've done one wound. The lion. So next thing roll. He's a seven. Roll the two. So very is a basic action. Which is basic action is X twice. Okay, so rolling two dice. Seven to seven, both hit. Three hit. Uh, head and the hand. Oh, we don't want them to knock, be knocked down. So we're going to dodge. Use four leaf dodge to uh, survival to dodge. Takes the survival down to zero. And he will take damage to his hand or arms rather he already had one so he's knocked down uh, the good thing is he's not a threat anymore but he won't be able to get up until the end of the monster's next turn 
good effort, good dual wound. Okay, next. We're going to do Trinity. Trinity. We're going to do a basic attacks. Rounding stone. Seven. That will hit. Use a six. Hit location. Beef tail. Okay. That's full move. Reflex. Full move monster forward in a straight line. Cancel all hits now out of range. Any survivors passed over suffer grab. Ugh. Okay. So, we would really would like her to crit because she criticals. Then, uh. Stop that, but she didn't. She rolled a four. For the reflex, the monster moves with full movement. Going to be six. Six and drags full leaf along with them. Okay, moment to reset the camera. Okay, so she just did an attack action. Um, what I'm going to do next. I believe I'm going to move Trinity move down. Uh, I have Christmas go next. Uh, there. To attack, two attacks. Two sixes. One hit. Shot. Beast chest. All right. So failure. Full move monster forward in a straight line. Cancel all hits now out of range. Any survivors passed over suffer grab. Wow. All right. So it's just not. <laughs> Christmas is day. Uh, in four leaf. All right, so we need a seven toughness. White line is toughness eight, so we need a seven because of the founding stone. All right. So he wounds him. So he doesn't. Uh, Continue to uh, maul or four leaf. Okay. So next we have Kira. Activate for free. Directly behind the beast. All right, she needs sixes. One and ten. It's Beef Brow. See that? Okay, this time it's a reflex if they wound. Alright, let's just roll the wound. See what happens. A seven. Nine. Okay. Wounds. More AI did. I call it wound. That. It. Okay. Reflex. Wound. Snarling. The monster swats at its attacker. Attacker suffers one brain damage. Perform basic action. Target the attacker. Ugh. So the monster. Turns. Suffers brain damage. She doesn't have any brain damage. Then 
and the monster also makes two attacks against her. Who's gonna do that? Both hit. Uh, both in the legs. I think I will go ahead and dodge one. Our survival down to zero. Trinity, since she suffered brain damage, she will have to draw on a disorder table. A moment, draw those cards out. Okay, so let's roll. It happens to her. And six. Brain trauma, five through six. Danger seizure. Thrash about wildly, dealing one damage to yourself and every adjacent survivor. Gain a random disorder and 1d5 insanity. So she does damage to herself. She hits waist. She has a point of armor on. So waist, right? Oh, that's a chest. That's light one to her chest. Christmas takes damage to his hand. Mark that off. Okay, and then it's E5 and 70. It's 5 sanity. Definitely, and she's over three. That means she's insane. Good for her. You know. Basically, uh, picked up some brain armor. Okay. Next, she gains a random disorder. Shuffling the deck. But. Seizures. Lingering damage from your head injuries has caused you to experience periods of uncontrollable shaking and absence of thought. During the showdown, whenever you suffer damage to your head location, you are knocked down. Oh, I can say it could have been worse. A lot worse. So we just note this in her disorders. And now get to go on to the monster mood raged there we go when this comes into play draw an AI card while on rage is in play white lion gains plus one damage token per monster level Damage token increases the damage dealt on monster attacks profile. Whenever survivor suffers any dismembered, severe injury, or is killed, discard it. Okay, so that is a mood. Okay, so get that in play. So, draw another card, another AI card. Maul. Okay, so the monster. The victim of grab last round. Okay. So I believe it is Worley. So basically he's just going to turn around. As a matter of said, the closest knockdown survivor in range as well. And four leaf cannot catch a break. So he's going to attack him at speed two. So he has two attacks. Damage is three. And it's actually going to be plus one because of the mood and rage, so it's going to be four. Ugh, four leaf. We have no survival to use. So it's just going to be straight damage if he hits. Okay. Kingdom death. Two hits. Uh, of course, the head. So he's already knocked down. He does four damage to the body, heavy, so 
he's already in severe injury. So four leaf may not be returning. Uh, let's see. Body head. Just do the head first. All right, you know I like to do the worst things first, so for the head. Hand, amazing. Destroyed tooth. If you have three plus courage, you boldly spit the tooth out and gain plus two insanity. Otherwise, the blow sends you sprawling and you are knocked down. Well, he's already knocked down. That was a good roll for a 10, but now for the body. Oh, another 10. Four leaf is living up to his name. <laughs> Blowed over. Blowed over. The blow sends you sprawling and you are knocked down. That is the best possible result he could have gotten. He could have been decapitated. He could have had his spleen ruptured or a gaping chest wound. But no, he survived that. Now that's pretty awesome. Can't make these things up. And so that actually ends the monster's turn. So it is now the survivor's turn. So Whirly is actually going to stand up. And yeah, we're going to have to take this thing out. I don't think Four Leaf is going to attack. Instead, he's going to move, hopefully, out of out of range. Let's just move him. He'll be in game. Two. Right. What he's going to do is actually going to throw his founding stone. To do that, you basically archive founding stone. There's a spin action to sling the stone from anywhere on the board. Archive this card for one automatic hit that inflicts a critical wound. So he's going to do that. But Four Leaf no longer has stone automatically hit to be small. So while you see the critical, it's just a persistent energy injury. So the blow destroys the white lion's jaw. Persistent injury, no jaw. Affects some AI cards. Roll 1d10 on the result of 5 plus. The white lion's jaw flies off his face. The attacker gains plus 1 courage and plus 1 survival. Alright. 4. Ah, so close. So close. But uh, this will stay in the play. Scored AI. Let's reshuffle the deck. It has four wound wounds remaining, three AI cards, and you have to do one additional. Take them out. Well, that stays in the play. Four leaf is done. So next, we're going to activate Christmas Go next. Hopefully, we have to do some real damage to this thing. Right, normally we need sevens, but since he's in a blind spot, you just need sixes. Six and a ten. Two hits. First hit location is a straining neck. And 
the beast temple. Okay, the beast temple does have a failure reaction. Straining neck doesn't. So basically we're just going to do the straining neck and we just need a seven. Toughness eight plus one strength for the bounding scroll stone. So it just needs a seven for the straining neck. Three. No, unfortunately. Not wound. So the beast temple does have a failure. Hopefully he'll wound. Ah, Christmas. We Christmas. So the beast turns. And he's going to perform his uh, basic action. To swing at Christmas twice. Both hit. Where does he hit him? Hand and body. The hand will put him heavy. Oh, he's actually doing two damage. Instead of just one. Alright. Yeah, either way. Yeah, either way he's going to be. The let's dodge the body. So he'll use his survival to dodge the body. And he'll take the heavy to the arm. Listen. Which knocks him down. He's not down the arm damage table. Okay. Three. Bleeding. Gains two bleeding tokens. Well, that's not too bad. Can get worse, but not bad for right now. Doing pretty good. All right, so next we're gonna have Trinity attack. Trinity, we need you to do some damage. All right, two hits. The beast ear. And beef knee. Well, it looks like the beef knee. We want to start because there's no reaction. That makes sense. Uh, you hit the white lion's sturdy kneecap. So we can do some damage here. And we need sevens. Oh, she does it. She moves. AI card. Wound deck. Okay, then the next one. Beast ear. Or. Uh, does not wound. Okay, the failure reaction is the white lion jumps back without turning, move the monster one space directly away from the attacker. Cancel all unresolved hits. Not out of range. Not bad. Oh. Jumps back one space. And what I think I am going to do now, uh, I'm going to spend another Bounding Stone of Trinity. Okay, so we draw a hit location. Fleshy Gut. And let's go ahead and remove the AI card. I think it only has two wounds. It has one AI card left. You have to do one basic. Okay. And the critical wound, the white line vomits all over you. Feels awesome. Gain one random basic resource. Gain plus three insanity. Alright. 
I have to worry about wow Trinity is really <laughs> going insane here so she's now up to eight sanity and now we get to draw a basic resource all right got these shuffled monster hide Okay, so with that, it is now the monster's turn again. Okay, so the monster does have only one remaining card, Maul. Victim, takes the target, uh, victim of grab last round, closest knockdown survivor in range. Ah, uh, so that's actually going to be Christmas. Oh, wait. Move up one space. I want to attack twice. Get monster will miss at least once. Yo, and he does miss one. Where does he hit Christmas? And the waste. How much damage does small do? All those four damage, so Christmas is just going to dodge that. <laughs> so Christmas now has no survival. I believe nobody else has survival. Everybody is out of survival. Okay. So Monster only has one AI card left. So, it reshuffle, but I'm going to put that card back in. All end of the monster's turn. Christmas will stand. Okay, just going to take this thing down. Here, uh, I'm going to attack. That was half her. Again, we're hitting on sixes because she is now in the beast rear. Once, to hit location, the beast femur. Blow lands on the monster's leg. So we need to roll another seven. Eight. All right, that gets rid of the last AI card. So now the monster can only perform basic action. Okay, so I think next we are going to have Christmas attack. Should I actually use? No. Oh. He's going to attack with the Founding Stone. I both missed, wouldn't have mattered anyway. And then we have Trinity. Back in the front. Two. Eight. Eight. Oh, clever boy. I was hoping we would take out this thing before that happens. Now what happens is this is a trap. 
The attacker is caught in the white lion's ruse and is savagely mauled. Attacker is doomed. Perform basic action. Target the attacker. We are doomed. You may not spend survival until this card is resolved. So basically, we thought the monster was almost dead. And it basically just tricked us. And so, now it is going to do basic action, which is <clears throat> two attacks. Both hit. Trinity. Ah, uh, both in the head. Can't dodge. This is like the worst possible thing. That, so, he's going to roll twice. He was twice. Let's roll the first one. Or Lee, you are not down. I suffer not back. Equal to your movement towards the closest board edge. Gain one d five insanity. Okay. Use not back. <clears throat> you are not down. I suffer not back. Not down. I really should roll again. Three. Memory loss. Lose two levels of weapon proficiency. Doesn't have any. Wow. I really thought she was going to die right there. Okay, so. To do one more wound. So it's up to four leaf and do it four leaf. He's going to go one, two. Alright, four leaf. It's up to you. Oh, before I forget, I have to put this back in the hit location deck. Reshuffle cards. Change angle. I thought he would be walking back this way, but you never know. You never know with these monsters. Right, I think it's been reshuffled. Okay. He hits once. That's all he needs. Where does he hit? Brainy neck. There's no reaction. Okay, he just needs a seven. Wait, nope. Only used his bounding stone. So he doesn't have the strength. He needs actually he needs an eight. Ah, he rolls a four. Oh, so that's it. The monster gets his turn. Okay, my good movement monster now Christmas has the monster controller. And so the white line is going to do basic action, which is going to target plus target within field of view. Not going to be uh, hero. It's just his blind spot and Trinity is not no longer a threat since she was on the ground.
So let's we pick one of those two. Yeah, let's do this randomly. Okay, because you can attack either one of them. But Christmas can give the monster controller. Let the monster attack him. Gain some insanity. Yeah, 40 is pretty beat up. Yeah, so Christmas is going to have the monster target him. Monster's going to turn around. Christmas will get a point of insanity. Monster is going to attack him twice. Oh, he missed once. Amazing. Hit Christmas in the body. That's two damage. I've not taken any damage. But that is going to knock him down. I'm good with that. And it's the monster's turn. So it is our turn again. Trinity is going to get up. Things right. Four leaf is not down. Trinity. Yeah, so four leaf, he's gonna go for he's gonna get right here on the beast. He's gonna use his fist and tooth. He hits twice and needs one first the beast's brow. Then strange hands. Failure. Oh, let's see, which one do we want to resolve? Okay, if we do the strange hands instinctively striking back the white lions, highly human hard hands dart forward as a basic action. But the beast brawl does a basic action but also causes brain damage. So we're just going to do strange hand first. See, oh, he did it! Did it. So there's no failure. And he actually crit it because when you're unarmed combat, he has deadly, and deadly gives you plus one luck. Luck gives you. Plus one on your uh, damage roll. So that nine becomes a ten. And you hack off the monster's hand. Spend one survival treasure this moment and gain plus one permanent strength. Oh, that's a shame. Four Leaf doesn't have any survival. And that would have caused a persistent injury. But with that, the beast. Is slain. All our survivors walk away. I'm actually kind of surprised. I really expected one of them to die. And, um, yeah, I only spent two, uh, two founding stones. But I didn't have to spend any more, so next time when these monsters is tougher, um, I can use those stones and be a little bit easier. Not gonna hold on to them. I see people hold on to these stones. Um, it's best to get them out of the way. So I'm gonna reset the table and uh, deal out the bounty that we got since we just carved up this white lion. He's a Thanksgiving turkey. Okay, so we're carving up the white lion. Let's see what we get. I think let's start with the basic. First, so for basic resources, we're going to get 
monster organ. Another monster organ. And monster bone. Ah, another monster bone. And those are the basic. And so now the actual uh, white lion resources. Get four of those too. Let me get the lion's tail, fur, great cat bone, and eye of the cat. Earlier, we also received some monster hide. So, yep, carve that sucker up. That's turkey. It's not even Thanksgiving. So when we go to next, this is the um, first story event that we're going to come to set up the settlement phase, and I'll be right back. Okay, we are now back, and we are going to start the first story event. It's called First Day. Survivors wander, drawn to a blooming light in the distance. They find the serene comfort of a towering pile of lanterns, a small collection of scared people. On a deep, instinctual level, they know this area is safe, and they make it their home. Row 1D10 to determine your starting population, or the result at the back of the settlement record sheet. Choose and record genders for unnamed survivors. You may name an unnamed survivor and create their survival record sheet at any time during the settlement phase. Okay. So we're just going to roll a d10. Ooh. Nine. So we get ten unnamed survivors that is a lot I guess at the least we'll get six so basically we have a population of 14 because of our four initial survivors okay and then we're going to go to the Returning Survivors story event. Okay, so we're now going to do the Returning Survivors event. So they return 10 other people with them and they find this or this big mound of lan lanterns light that they follow to make their new settlement. So during this, there's first words. So I'm going to nominate to pick one survivor to utter the first words for the settlement. I believe I'm going to pick Kira. Yep, Kira, he is going to utter the first words. And it says, the nominated survivor steps forward and gains plus one courage. So she will get plus one courage. Speaking the very first words. Okay. Settlement gains the language innovation. Search the innovation cards for language and place it face up in your play area. Record it in your settlement sheet. And then you build the innovation deck according to the language on this card here. Okay, and I've done that. Six cards. Shuffle them. Cards have been shuffled. And if it, the innovation deck is persistent. Finished with their work, the settlement gathers around its glowing center. Glowing center. 
Armed with language, the nominated survivors happily named the glowing center of their home, the Lantern Horde. Settlement games, the Lantern Horde settlement location. So we take out the Lantern Horde location. We do get to name the actual sell settlement, Titan Settlement. Because we are Titans of Mars. Now it sounds good to me. So then we take the Lantern Horde. Uh, Place that innovation on that on our sediment location. And basically, what this does is, is basically we have endeavor, endeavors that we and get an endeavor for every survivor that returns. So we have four. So we'll get four endeavors used to build up our settlement. Now there are other ways in this game we can get more endeavors. I'm going to start with the four. According to this, innovate once per settlement phase. You may spend the listed resources to draw two innovation cards, keep one, and return the other to the deck. But we can also, without drawing innovation cards, we can also use it to build other locations. The Bonesmith, Skinnery, Organ Grinder. Okay, and since we have language, we have shared experience. Let's nominate the survivor that has two or more hunt XP than yourself. They describe illuminating details of their desired death. You're not deaf, gain plus one hunt XP from the story. The nominate survivor has. Shattered jaw instead of getting plus one damage. We're all in the same, but we all received one XP for killing the white lion, so everybody equal, so that won't apply. Um, I am going to take a moment to set up the rest of the table and get out the rest of these um, settlement locations see which one we're going to build. The returning survivors did that but gained endeavors that are indicated with these tokens. So we had four, we had four survivors and then uh, we updated the timeline with the first story event. Let's see. There is no death. Moving. But we hadn't reached any milestones yet. So we can go on to the development part in which we can spend one of the endeavors to innovate. Now one thing to mention that when they returned, since this is the first story event, all our returning survivors get back their survival. So they all get one survival back. So that's going to help us out a lot. Next showdown phase and the uh, hunt phase. Give me a moment to get everything on the in innovation set up. I'll be right back. I'm trying to decide if the bone myth working grinder. Skinnery. I do have, have three bone, three monster hide, and three organs. Or I could just consume one of these monster organ. Be right here. As she says, if you consume this, archive this card, roll 1d10, and the result of 6 plus, and track the parasite. Archive all consumable gear in your gear grid now. I don't know why you want to do that. It's there if you want to get parasites. But um, back to what I was thinking. I have four endeavors, so I could just build all three. 
also do an innovation for what we have. I think with the resources I have, I'm gonna go ahead and um, spend the three endeavors, get these three, three places. I'm gonna spend three organs and go to the organ grinder, get monster grease. Monster grease is um pretty useful. When your character has that, they get plus one evasion. So instead of the monster only needing a two plus, they'll need a three plus. Or things like terrain, like grass, also increase your evasion. So it might help them a little bit. Spent one monster hide and got the rawhide. rawhide Headband. This headband, use an action, and you can re reveal the top two AI cards and place them back on top of the deck in any order. So you'll be able to see what's coming next. And then I spent all three of my bone picked up. I got one of each. Uh, somebody's not going to have a weapon. All those still have a founding stone. But, got the bone dagger. Let's see. It's pretty good. It's uh, three speed, throwing three attacks. Sitting on sevens and strength one. <clears throat> but on a perfect hit, so if I roll a 10, I gain plus one survival. Then I have the Bone Blade, which is a two speed attack, which hits on sixes. It's actually strength two. But the thing is, these are frail. And if they hit like a dense object, it has the potential just to break the weapon. And just to add more versatility, pick up the Bone Darts. And with these, they're a speed one, so one attack, they hit them a seven plus. If they're a strength three, you can actually throw them. But they are also frail. And so spending everything, I have um, one monster hide and white fur, which is also counts as a hide. So my next survivors will be having that. So I'm gonna use my last endeavor Okay, what I'm going to do next is actually um, draw an innovation card. Endeavors, I'm buying all three of those. Let's shuffle these cards, just pick one off the top. Paint. Paint. Sediment swells. Creative energy. All survivors gain dash survival action. And so dash. Once per round, spend one survival to gain plus one action and use it immediately. Okay, so dash is basically an extra movement you can use to get out of the way. Monsters come in. If you move it, move out of the range of the monster's attack, then it's basically like dodging. Okay, and I believe that's, that's everything besides building up for the next battle. Next game, I'll show how I built my next survivors going out. I think I may have missed something if I didn't cover it. The returning survivors, the nominated survivor that I picked to do utter, utter the first words, which was Kira. And when we get to the glowing center, that survivor sits in front of the lantern Horde in awe and gains plus one understanding. They must skip the next hunt phase as they ponder the meaning of existence, of their existence. So they will be skipping the next hunt. So I had to pick a new survivor, name that survivor, and they will be going out in her place. Thank you for watching my very first game. Uh, it's the first time I've ever recorded anything, and so I hope the quality will get better. And um. Just still learning the rules, 
you know, try not to fumble too much with the rules. So hopefully I got everything correct, or at least 90% correct. Um, the young girls get more involved when you start going to the, um, the actual hunt phase where you set up the board and you actually have to walk through to get to the monster. The other monster just starting with you like that. But um, that's it for me now. And uh, play more games.